Welcome back to another lecture in CIT 130, Introduction to Java Programming. Today we're going to talk about something a little different um, in our object-oriented programming concepts and ideas. If you remember all the way back at the beginning of the semester, when we did our very first program, our Hello World, one of the first things we looked at was this idea of our main method, the place where we start and run our application. And we talked about this term here, static. At the time, we kind of just said, hold on and we'll get there. We've talked uh, a little bit about public versus private access modifiers. We've learned about why uh, void, you know, is a returning nothing uh, where the method has no return value. We've talked about arguments or inputs to the method and method names. Now it's time to talk about this term static. Static simply means that whatever the element is, whether it's a variable, a constant, or a method that that member belongs to the class but n does not belong to uh, objects made from the class. Now on face value that probably doesn't mean very much to you but to start out with let's think about a program like public class hello. When we were talking about this hello class, we never instantiated objects from hello. All we did was use the Java virtual machine to run the program. The fact that we never make objects out of hello is why the main has to be static because it's going to be called from the class, not from the method itself. Inside the virtual machine, the reason that we call all, all of our uh, initializing or main programs main is inside that virtual machine, it immediately makes a call to the class name dot main. It accesses that method called main through the class. If we look more recently at what we've been working on, our rectangle test, what we see is the same thing, public, static, void, main. And so what is happening is when we type in Java space rectangle test dot Java whoops just rectangle test what we're actually doing is we're sending this rectangle test as an argument to this program Java inside of Java when it goes to do all that what it's actually doing is it's actually making a call to rectangle test dot main and it sends zero arguments that way because we didn't put any arguments after the class name. But the reason we put this class name in here without a dot anything beyond it is we're just telling it the name of the class 
where that static main method lives. So it uses the name of the class, the dot operator, and then accesses that static method. Beyond that, if you remember when we did um, some of our movie ticket stuff, we had an additional method in there, public static boolean is numeric. And we called that is numeric from um, within the class itself from another static method. Because we can think of st uh, the static members as being part of a domain, that domain being the class itself, rather than objects. And thus far, we've only used this static um, keyword in classes that we that we were just running, the ones that have the main. We're going to go beyond that today, but the point I want to start with here is that inside of this static method, main, that's part of rectangle test, I can make reference to another static method, another method that's part of the class, send it a value, have it execute, and return its Boolean value. The fact that it's static means that it's accessed from within the class, either while, you know, in the code of the class itself, if it's being run, um, or as we'll see, um, they can also be um, accessed from the class, like I said, with the through the, the class name and then the method. So in theory, if I were um, to create another program that lived in this same directory, I could go through rectangle test and call the is numeric method without even using any of this main up here because it's accessible from that place. We saw something um, similar to that in um, when we were working in the movie theater with um, some of our more uh, um, complicated uh, versions of um, the movie tickets. We used a static member or a static method out of out of um, the math class. When uh, we look in here, we can see that we um, right here we used this math dot round price. What we were checking to see if the price rounded off was the same as the price. That would only happen, if you remember, um, when the price itself was a whole number, something that didn't, um, you know, that didn't have any digits past the decimal point besides zero. But what I'm really trying to focus on here is the concept that we're invoking or calling this method round from the class, not from an object. And if we go and look at our um, our math class documentation, what we see is that there's a whole series of static methods. 
you notice how every one of these is listed as static. What this really is, is like a method library. This is a very, very common thing. Um, if you come back for the advanced Java class, we'll be actually building something like this in there. We'll build um, a class with static method uh, called from somewhere else. And you see that that included in this is that round. You see that when it's static round, what we're really doing is we're calling this through the math class rather than an object of the math class. Math not really representing an item that there would be many of. It's really just this is a place where we can put things that don't fit inside of an object but still um, need to be referred to or used for some kind of work or calculation. So that's where these static methods, another place where they come into play other than when you have your own main. And you'll notice um, another thing in here inside the math class are these uh, static constants. We see this static double E and the static double pi. Those are uh, refer to numbers, spe special numbers that have specific values that we want um, access to for doing certain kinds of calculations. Like if you're doing, um, you know, the area or circumference of a circle, you know, area of a circle is pi r squared. We can get that value for pi from here, from the static double, rather than, um, say, from uh, by typing in some version of it ourselves. Um, we can use some agreed on version from the math class um, to work with. So, you know, static constants uh, are also a very common uh, thing that we will look at in more depth in the advanced class. But to get um, sort of the general idea of using static members, I am going to show uh, uh, an example today that is um, relatively commonly used as an introduction to static members for um, uh, for Java uh, and that is the use of a static variable that is part of the class, but uh, not part of the objects of the class. What we're going to add here is private in, uh, static int rectangle counter. This is going to be a counter of how many rectangle objects we're going to work with. By making it static, it's part of the class and not part of the um, of objects of the class. So when we make individual rectangles, we don't get a rectangle counter property in each of those. What we're doing is we're, we're having a centrally located rectangle counter uh, in the class. So when the class is first used and loaded, that rectangle counter variable is um, instantiated here and because it's static and it sits there until it's used somewhere else. 
Now we did make it private, so we're not going to access it directly from say our rectangle test. We're gonna um, access it rather um, through a get method. We are not going to create a set method, which is a little different than what we're used to. What we're gonna do instead is we're going to initialize it upon loading of the class, and then we're going to increment it every time a new rectangle object is created. So in order to um, initialize it, what is really common is to create what we call a static block. This is the use of the static keyword alone in the program and just as when the rectangle class is first referenced in a, a running pro a running class like our rectangle test it will uh, the for Java virtual machine will guarantee running any static block in the order that it's written inside the class um, immediately so that um, meaning before even like you know our first constructor is called um, at which is generally going to be the first reference to the rectangle so what I can do here is I can say rectangle counter equals zero this way at as soon as the rectangle class is loaded into the virtual machine upon its first reference in a running program, the counter will be set to zero. Then what we can do is inside of each of our constructors, we can add a rectangle counter plus plus. And you'll see I am adding it at the bottom of the method because in particular, if remember when we were doing our exception handling in the last lecture, remember an exception could be thrown at either this set width or set height place. I don't want to I don't want to increment that counter until I'm positive that the um, object is going to be instantiated. So I'm just making it the very last one uh, for that reason. I know that in any of these cases it will be um, it will be run once we're guaranteed there will be a new rectangle. That way I won't get a false count. Now in case you forgot, we down here, we also created a copy method, which could, which uh, essentially creates a brand new rectangle, right? It returns a rectangle that is new. But we don't have to worry about adding an increment there because that method calls one of the constructors up above so it will increment there but I just wanted to point that out because again I want you thinking about all the aspects of everything you write so that as we add on and we do modifications and we build on the code we've created we really want to uh, be thinking holistically so we wanted to increment that central counter that static counter that counter that's part of the rectangle class, not part of rectangle objects, every time a new object is created. And this is a place where a new one can occur, but we're that's handled by the fact that the constructor has it in there. So what we've done is we've actually, in this particular program, one of the reasons this is a common example that we use is that the rectangle 
or we are using three of the four, um, really of the five ways that we use static right here. We're using static on uh, a, on a property or a field on uh, you know a variable within the class. We're using it as an initializer, uh, a piece of code that's run the first time the rectangle class is referenced. We're using, and uh, the last place we're going to use it is with a static method. We're going to do public static int get rectangle counter, just like every other get method, it does not have input, and what it's going to do is return the value of rectangle counter. And by making it static, we're accessing that static variable um, through the class uh, rather than through an object of the class. And that way, we can see how many objects were created inside um, this process. So let's see this in action. Let me save that work. Let me make sure that that, um, that, that uh, compiles. Java C rectangle dot Java that should compile. So we're pretty confident that's all going to work. Let's go back over to our rectangle test and down here at the bottom where we were showing a bunch of other stuff, what I'm going to add is I'm going to add another system.out.printf and we're going to say a total of percent D rectangle objects were created percent N comma rectangle the class dot get rectangle count. We are calling that rectangle count method, get rectangle count method, statically through the class rather than through one of the objects of the class, the R1s through 4. That's how we access something that's static, just like we did in the movie tiff tickets with math.round. That's that access to, um, to the static member. So let's save that. And let's compile um, our rectangle test.java. Did I miss, and maybe I mistyped it, rectangle count. Oh, I, for some reason I called it counter. I, that should be count. I'm going to recompile both. And let's run it again. When... I say Java rectangle test, what I'm doing is I'm asking that Java virtual machine to call the static main on this class right here, rectangle test. And I'll just go ahead and put in some standard stuff there. And what we see is at the bottom a total of four rectangle objects were created. Looking back at our source code for rectangle test, what we see is here is a call to a constructor, one. Down here in our 
try and um, catch block, we create a second one. If this highlighted part here doesn't work, it gets created down here. So it actually, R2 gets created either way, but not both. It's never both. And if we go down uh, further, we see um, that there is a co uh, copy method called here, which itself called a constructor, thus creating the third object. And way down here, we have another uh, rectangle being called through the copy constructor. Therefore, we made a fourth one. That's all four calls to constructors, so I see that my result here is indeed valid, correct. It, it's what we expected. It's what we wanted. Um, and we see how that static method called through the class works. Now, I mentioned just a few minutes ago the five ways that we use static. Um, the fourth, we I briefly mentioned here, which was static constants. These are um, usually reference values that we put inside of classes um, for a centralized standard for some reference value. Things like the E value, which is a, a, an engineering constant, and pi, which is uh, the constant associated with uh, circles. Those are some of uh, the places where that comes into place. And there is one other, although it's very rarely used, I did want to uh, reference it anyway. One of the, th the things that we can do is we can do static member imports to make our code slightly more concise. Like I said, this isn't very commonly used, but let's look at a static import. The static import works just like any other import. We use the import keyword, but we throw in an extra static so that we can say that we are importing or creating a reference to some static member within a class. Um, besides showing you static imports, this also points out that um, uh, uh, how we use, how we've been using static members from the very first day again. When I do java.lang, whoops, I hit the caps lock, Java, java.lang dot system dot out, what I'm saying is I want to specifically uh, import or reference the system dot, dot out object, which is a static uh, object within the system class. Again, if we go back into um, our API documentation, what we see is there is a static print stream called out, just like there's a static input stream called in that we used for all our keyboard input. These being static means we access them through the class system. And when I do, uh, when I specifically import a static element, what that allows me to do is to refer to that object directly without referencing the class that it's associated with. System.out 
I can just reference out and that import tells the Java Virtual Machine where that object lives by importing it by name we can access it directly like I said you're not going to see this type of thing very often but I still like to show it as one of the many ways that um, static referencing is um, an important part of the Java language and um, that it's more than just something that you're um, that you're going to just see once academically and not get to get to other ways. Um, some of what we've talked about today, these are ab uh, absolutely practical and useful ways of, of using static um, in, in sort of a systematic way. Um, and hopefully it helps drive home more of the concept behind what static means. Because again, remember that definition. Something that is static is part of the class rather than part of objects of the class. And by showing these various ways, these five different ways of using static, hopefully that helps you more clearly understand how um, that works. Now you see I got rid of the system dot throughout that program and yet it compiled correctly and you'll also see that it runs the exact same way it did before I did that. Because of the static import what I did was I made a reference directly to that static object within the system class so that I did not have to um, type in where, which class that object was, uh, was coming from. So this uh, finishes our discussion of the static keyword and static members. It is um, an important concept. You'll get, like I said, some more looks at it in the advanced class uh, if you join us next semester. And you'll really see it uh, particularly from that perspective that the math class presents it to us. Um, but it's also, this loops us back around to that idea of why the main is static. Um, so that, that we close the loop on sort of where we started everything with. Um, additionally, this finishes um, sort of our walk through the basics of the fundamentals of the Java programming language. This is the last topic that sort of gives us all the building blocks we need to get in and dig deep and do some real um, practical um, programming that uh, you would do in a um, sort of professional environment, and you come, uh, you, you can come and see that in the advanced class. There is one more lecture um, that introduces some API library stuff but will also give us the opportunity to review all of the concepts that we've built this entire term. So next, in the next and final lecture, what you're going to see is being able to read from and write to text files on your computer. And that will be a way of, of reviewing all of the fundamental concepts uh, and language building blocks that we've covered this semester. So uh, look for that um, next week along with next weekend the final will be posted and you'll, so you'll get a chance to 
um, work through something that um, utilizes all of the concepts from the entire semester. So uh, if you have any questions on this topic or any topic thus far, please feel free to reach out, and I look forward to talking again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.